Hi, my name is Tracy Cornelius and I'd like to welcome you to Get Creative with Tracy. Today we're going to be making another trifold shutter card, but this time this one fits into a DL envelope. This one has been made using the Comfort Cafe design series paper from Stampin' Up! And we're going to make a slight variation on this and make a girly version. And the papers that I'm going to be using today are from the Birds of a Feather. These are gorgeous, gorgeous papers. In fact, I struggled to try and find full sheets of each one. Um, but they're so, so pretty. Uh, again, all double-sided. So you can use them for numerous different projects. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a sheet of Melon Mambo A4 cardstock. Cut this one to 11 by um, 8 and a quarter. So just lining that one up, so this one is like the tiniest um, slither, so. Once you've done that, we're going to be scoring. So flip your paper around to the landscape side and you'll want to score it at one and three quarters. And then at three and a half. At seven. And then lastly at eight and three quarter inches. Once you've done that, you want to then flip this round to the portrait side and we are going to go one and three quarter inches in, so that would be to here, and then you want to cut a line going from your two inch score line all the way through um, to your six and a quarter one. So just so I can show you one one that I've already done earlier, that means that we're going to be basically cutting from uh, the first score line on each end. So that means that you can just line it up really well. So you've just got like a little marker to go there. So popping that one on and then just cutting all the way down. Like so. And then we're going to flip that round and do it exactly the same on uh, the other side. We've got the basis of our card blank here. <clears throat> I've made all the score lines and all the cuts. So the first section, we're going to fold. It looks like a T, so we're going to fold that one going from uh, left to right, and then you're going to be pushing in the ends here. That one's going to go. Then we've got the middle section. You're going to push that one in towards um, the left-hand part of the card go down so that you can make all the creases like so then it comes to making the mats um, I do find that this is much better if you do um, a couple of um, layers so if I bring in <coughs> the one that we've already made you can see that I've matted it onto a plain cardstock and then used patterned paper you could go directly from the patterned paper onto the um, card blank but it's just one of those things that gives you some really good finishing touches. Now the mats that you're going to need, um, all of the measurements will be on my blog, but for this one I've used um, the crumb cake cardstock and the first one that we've cut is um, two inches by eight inches and that's going to fit onto here like so and then um, we've got the other ones corresponding to each of the different sections. <laughs> now I have done this one slightly differently in that I'm not matting these two sections um, and I'll explain that um, in a little while. So once you've got all of your plain mats you will then need to cut out the patterned paper. So I already for ease of use have gone ahead and put all of my patterned paper onto the mats. So like I said all the measurements will be on my blog but what you will find is that they are all one eighth of an inch smaller than your plain mats. So, <clears throat> I like to place all of my little parts onto the card blank before I stick them all down so this is a way that I can work out composition and any changes that I might want to make. 
Now on these ones you can see that I have actually used the opposite side. So we've got a little bit of contrast. Now the middle section is where I'm going to have um, the greeting. So I am actually going to pop a little crumb cake um, mat in the middle. But these two sections I'm leaving so we've got a bit more of a contrast. I didn't want to put the stripes in because then um, it's uh, getting a bit too stripey. <laughs> um, new technical word. And I also didn't want to use any of the bird paper because I didn't want to detract away from the design that I've got. But I am going to be using um, a little embellishment for the front so we're going to go through that in a minute. Whichever glue that you prefer to use um, I would recommend if you're not very confident about sticking it into a place and you, you want a little bit of time to manoeuvre it around then our glue sticks are perfect. They come into a pack of two so you'll have plenty there um, or the snail adhesive. Now snail adhesive um, is one of the products which is a little bit more unforgiving once it's down that kind of it um, but it's so easy uh, to use and it's less messy and very very quick. So this is the one that I'm going to use. A little tip for those of you that are just getting to grips with it. If you're not going to be quite sure once you pop something down, then just use a limited amount on the corners. It will still stay, but what it does mean is that, for example, if I was to pop this down and I've got it at a bit of an angle, then that means that I can then pick it back up and position it to where I want it to be. So I'll just show you again. If that suddenly went down, um, then because I haven't put too much snow adhesive on, I'm then able to lift it back up again. So just spend a little bit of time positioning this so that you've got a border all the way around you in the melon mambo. And then you can just go ahead and all, add all the other elements to your card. So now it's time to add our um, embellishment for the front. So what I've done is I've used um, a stamp which was from our celebration stamp sets. So this one was from the um, Vintage Versus and one of the things that I love about Stampin' Up! is that they have the most amazing designs for uh, some of the sentiments and the stamps that we have and they are beautifully etched. Um, so when you have the celebrations offer or any of the promotions I really highly recommend that you make the most of them because once the promotion is over you then can't get them anymore. So I stamped this one onto some Whisper White cardstock and then I have used the Label Collections Framelets and my Big Shot. Again I've used Melon Mambo and Crumb Cake. You've got one of two choices when it comes to adhering this one onto your card. You could either use your snail adhesive um, or again you could use the glue stick or if you prefer you could use some dimensionals just to give it a bit more pop which is um, exactly what I'm going to do. The only thing you need to be careful of if you're doing something which is really large and it's bigger th than this area, or wider should I say, then um, it's the placement of the dimensionals on the back. Not too much of an issue for me, because mine fits perfectly to the size that I've actually got. So you don't need to be frugal with the dimensionals, they're a really really good price and you do want to make sure that it doesn't sag in any areas. Pop off the back and then you can just position that to where you want it to be. Now if you wanted to decorate this one uh, further then you can add some more finishing touches. That would be the type of thing that I might do later on. So I'll just give you an example with the one that we made earlier. We've added some of the um, dotted ribbon um, paper from one of the punches from Stamping Up and again used some corresponding cardstock at the bottom. So it's good again just to give a bit of contrast and a bit more interest to the card. Again you could stamp into the middle or put any kind of sentiment or anything that you wish. So that's how to make your trifold shutter card for a DL envelope. Like I said all the measurements will be written on my blog um, for you to be able to make that project. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.